So I gave this to you for homework, and I think one thing is very clear. When you see a problem like this, it's the better choice to use a horizontal rectangle. Now, how do you tell? Well, the first way you tell is because right now the functions are all in terms of y. That is the first way you tell horizontal rectangles should be used. The second way you tell is by looking at the picture. If you look at the picture, you're going to realize that a horizontal rectangle, there's always a right curve and there's always a left curve. And that makes the problem more manageable. Let's look at the solution. So if you were to graph these figures, x equals y squared is, of course, a, a horizontal parabola. And uh, x equals 6 minus y. In order to graph that, you should put it into y equals mx plus b. And then you graph it. Most important thing to do in order to find the area between the curves is to find their intersection points. How do you do that? You set the curves equal to one another. Setting the curves equal to one another yields the y values of 3 and 2. Be careful, they're not x values. Sometimes we get kind of caught up in old practices and we think those are x's, so just be careful. So y equals 2 and y equals 3 are right here and right here. y equals 2 and negative 3. Negative 3, sorry, I kept saying 3. y equals negative 3. Uh, in order to find the x values, all you have to do is square the y values. Or plug them in here and do 6 minus them, but this one's faster. So, a horizontal rectangle will be right minus left using y everything. y bounds, y variables, y respect. So, my rectangle that I drew is right in here. Guys, I recommend you draw the rectangle because it's going to help you see what's right and what's left. Especially when the regions get more complicated. Okay? So right minus left, it's very simple in this problem. The right curve is the linear curve. So that's the first curve, 6 minus y. And the left curve is the parabola right here. The left curve is the parabola. And the parabola is just y squared. Now, in my answer key, I set it up as two separate integrals. However, it is not necessary. You may use one integral, the integral from negative 3 to 2 of 6 minus y minus y squared dy. It does not matter. I'm not con too concerned at the moment with the actual integration, just FTC. Uh, answer of 125 over 6 if you had it. So hopefully we all got that. Are there any questions with this problem from a horizontal point of view? Let's check it from a vertical point of view. So to do the same problem from a vertical point of view, I'm going to zoom in the, the photo picture for just a second, and I'm going to show you that the process becomes more complicated. The reason why the process becomes more complicated is because when you draw your rectangles in the region, depending on where your rectangle is, there is a different top and bottom, top and bottom. You need to split this region into two separate regions. Region number one, will be on the left side, where the upper curve is the left branch of the parabola, so to speak, or the, uh, you know, this side, the first quadrant. And the bottom is the right branch of the parabola, so to speak, or the bottom branch of the parabola, which is just over here in quadrant four. And if you go to this region right here, which we'll call region two, now the right branch is the linear, uh, excuse me, the top branch is the linear, and the bottom branch is that right piece or bottom piece of the parabola. So you need to be cautious. Are you going to be asked to do these problems both ways? No. No, you're not. You need to figure out which way is better, which way is more efficient. All right? So in order to solve this problem, you have to take the step of taking the curves and putting them into y equals form. Now, we already did it here because, of course, y equals mx plus b is how you graph linear functions. Uh, but over here, all you have to do is just square root both sides. And you get that the top branch is root x and the bottom branch is negative root x. So we integrate. We integrate. So region number one's integral will be top branch minus bottom branch, which comes out to square root uh, of x times 2 dx. Bounds there from 0 to 4. We're using x's now. x's. So 0 to 4, 4 to 9. 4 to 9, 0 to 4. And then the second piece, which I did decide to split up into two integrals, but it does not matter. The integral from 4 to 9 of negative x plus 6 minus root x dx. You got the same answer. 
125 over 6. Are there any questions about splitting this using vertical rectangles? Okay. Let's do another problem. A new problem that looks like this. So we're going to find the region bounded by the curves x equals y squared plus 2y minus 4 and y equals negative 2x minus 1. In order to solve this appropriately, you need to find the intersection points. But before we even do that, what do you think? Do you think we should use a vertical or a horizontal? I kind of think I heard it, but there's one choice. Now, let's just also say they're both in different forms, right? So the question is, what's easier, putting this into y equals or putting that into x equals? I think the answer is clear. And putting this into x equals is much easier. In fact, it is impossible to solve for y in this equation. You can't do it. You cannot isolate y in that parabolic equation. So it actually be impossible to use a vertical rectangle in this problem. Instead, we have to use a horizontal. Okay? So in order to do that, I am actually going to use this to help me graph it. But what I want to do is put it into x equals in order to use it to integrate. So if I do that, I'm going to plus 1 to both sides. So negative 2x is equal to y plus 1. So x is equal to y plus 1 all divided by negative 2, which is the piece I'm going to use in order to do the integration. So I think I'm ready to graph it. Okay. So in order to graph that quadrant, uh, the, uh, the linear, that's really easy. It's just y equals negative 2x minus 1. In order to graph the quadratic, you've got to find the vertex, right? In the vertex of the quadratic, you're going to use y equals negative b over 2a, because it's in uh, inverted form. So we have to use y equals negative b over 2a instead of x. So this becomes negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is equal to negative 1. So the vertex has a y value of negative 1. And I have to go and find x. So x is equal to negative 1 squared plus 2 times negative 1 minus 4. So I get that x is equal to negative 1 squared is 1. 2 times negative 1 is negative 2 minus 4. So I finally end up with 1 minus 2, which is negative 1, minus 4 is negative 5. That tells me that this horizontal sideways parabola has a vertex of negative 5, negative 1. x comma y. Okay. So I'm just going to move my grid down so it's not in the way of all that nice math. We'll put the nice math back up for a moment. The leading coefficient of the parabola is positive, which means the parabola opens to the right. The parabola opens to the right. So I think that's good enough to graph it. I don't have to make an elaborate picture. This is not pre-calculus. I don't need to find more points, find zeros, find y-intercept, find x-intercept. I just need to make a decent, somewhat log logical graph. So negative 5, negative 1 is the intercept, or the vertex. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, negative 1. And I know it opens to the right. But I know the picture looks a little something like that. That's all I need. It's fine. And I'm going to graph this guy, which is y equals negative 2x minus 1. So it has a y-intercept of negative 1. And it has a slope of negative 2, which I know is going to look a little something like this. And this. So I have created the picture. I have my intersection points. The next step would be to find those intersection points. Okay? So let's find the intersection points. So I have to take the curves and set them equal to one another. So let's do that. Let's do y squared plus 2y minus 4. I'll do it, uh, I'll do it down here. y squared plus 2y minus 4 equals, and this guy is going to be y plus 1 over negative 2. 
y plus 1 over negative 2. So let's take step 1. Let's times both sides by negative 2 just to get rid of the fraction. So negative 2y squared minus 4y plus 4 times 2 is 8 equals y plus 1. Let's, uh, let's move it all over and solve for y equals 0. So minus y, minus 1, both sides. So we get negative 2y squared, and we minus y from minus 4, which makes minus 5 of them. We minus 1 from 8, which makes 7. And then I like positive leading coefficients, so let's multiply everything by negative 1. And we factor. Or we, we hope it's factorable. But these area problems typically come out clean. So 2y and y, let's see, it's got to be 7 and 1. I can't do 7 times 2, that'd make 14, that'd be too big. So I think it's going to be this. And I need to make positive 5, so it needs to be positive 7, negative 1. So I solve each piece, so I get the 2y plus 7 equals y. So I get that y is equal to negative 7 halves, and I get that y equals to positive 1. Those are my intersection points. You have the option to go back and find the x values that correspond to those intersection points, but it's redundant. You don't need them. We're not going to do this problem using a vertical rectangle because it's impossible to solve for y. So that's all I need. I don't, I don't need to go and actually find them. So I've got negative 7 halves and 1. So this piece is 1. And this one is negative 7 halves. Negative 3.5 if you like. We're ready to solve the problem. That's just the setup. It is essential you draw a picture. You cannot do these problems without a picture. There's too much going on. Okay? Okay, let's do it. Step one, draw a rectangle. I don't think we need to make a rectangle that large. In fact, let's use a nice color. Nice color. That's a good rectangle. Look at that rectangle. That's solid. So we draw a rectangle in order to wrap our minds around this. Right minus left. That's what I need to see. So I'm going to use going to use a horizontal rectangle. And don't mind if I do as well. I'm going to take all this lovely work right here. I'm just going to scooch it down so we can do the integral now. So we're going to use a horizontal rectangle, which means I do. Right minus left, and I use y as my variable for everything. Now, this region is actually pretty kosher. There's always one right, and there's always one left. That's always right. Always one right, and always one left. So, I'm only going to need to integrate once. The right curve is always the linear. So, the linear is equation is y plus 1 over negative 2. So it's the integral from negative 7 halves to 1 of y plus 1 over negative 2 minus, or close the integral if you want. The left curve is always the parabola y squared plus 2y minus 4. It is very important you put the second curve in parentheses because you're subtracting it entirely. Ladies and gentlemen, please take a moment for me. And if you're more comfortable setting it up into two, set it up into two, but I want you to get me an answer, okay? I want you to get me the answer to this integral. Find me the answer.
Let's agree to keep it as an improper fraction so we can all compare. How does 243 over 16 sound? Got a lot of head nods? 243 over 16? Of course, uh, I've never really said this, but it's common knowledge. If you're punching this in your calculator, do not use Y's. The, the alpha numbers on your calculator are all constant. You should never use them. You should always use X. That little button that has like X, theta, T, whatever, that's your variable button. Otherwise your calculator is just going to call this a constant and integrate this and call the integral of Y plus 1 over negative 2, Y plus 1 over negative 2, Y or X. And that's not what we want. All right. So ladies and gentlemen, that is essentially the procedure of finding the area between two curves. Okay. Here's what remains left in the section. We're going to try some AP problems right now, try some practice AP problems. And also, we're going to try to make sure we understand that there's always one better approach. When you're solving an AP problem with a multiple choice question or an FRQ, any area problem, try to figure out what approach is better. Should I use a vertical or should I use a horizontal? All right? Okay, let's do... Yeah, talk to me, Luke. Um, I still don't understand how do you, like, find the like what bounds you're using. Like I get how you go through Okay. Like I get how you can find a y value, but like why are you going from negative seven over two to one? Sure. Like that doesn't So essentially whenever I say find the area bounded by the curves, that means find the area between them. Yeah. Okay. And if I decide to use a horizontal rectangle, what that means is I'm evaluating this thing from y to y, from there to there. So it's the same region loop, whether I evaluate it from here to here, or whether I evaluate it from here to here. It's just whatever rectangle you choose dictates the bound you use. So if I decide to use a horizontal rectangle, that means what I need to do is measure this perpendicular to my rectangle. So it's always, the bounds basically are measured perpendicular to the rectangle you draw. So I use a y bound for a Horizontal rectangle? So a horizontal rectangle you're going from the bottom to the top. Yes, okay. exactly. In a vertical rectangle, you're going from the side to the side. Correct. Does that help? Okay. Here's a good AP problem. Choice E is cut off, so I'll put it right here for you. I'd like you all to try this. Choice E is 5 pi over 18. This is calc active. The problem says, the region bounded by the x-axis in part of the graph of cosine x between 0 and pi over 2 is divided into two regions by some line x equals c. So there's some vertical line that splits it into two regions. They're telling you the area of those regions are equal. If the area between 0 and c and the area between c and pi over 2 is equal, then what is C? Ladies and gentlemen, this problem is asking you to set up integrals with a constant as a bound, and then solve the integrals in order to find out what C is equal to. Give it a shot. Give it a shot. Two separate problems, and they're equal to one another.
If you think you found the answer, let me know with a little hand raise. I'll tell you if you got it. Pay no attention to the iPhone. Yeah. the question without giving the answer. How do you set up the integral of that curve between 0 and C? Alright, I literally, I'm saying the answer, like I'm not trying to, but it's, it's that obvious. Yes, is that you have a second one, and the bounds are different, and I told you that they're equal. Is it's the it's the region between the x-axis and cosine, right? Between the x-axis and cosine. So it's old school integration, very easy integration. But what we're doing is splitting this thing at c. And the uh, the question is nice enough to even outline the bounds for you. So you know the integral from zero to c of cosine x dx is the area of the left region. And the problem is telling you that that's simply equal to the integral from c to pi over 2 of cosine x dx. Couldn't remember those cosine x dx. This is the problem you must solve. 
Well, in order to solve this, all you have to do is use the fundamental theorem of calculus part two. What is the antiderivative of cosine? Sine. So this is equal to the antiderivative of cosine evaluated at the upper bound minus the antiderivative of cosine evaluated at the lower bound. Fundamental theorem of calculus part two right there. Equals fundamental theorem of calculus part two again. The antiderivative evaluated at the upper minus the antiderivative evaluated at the lower. And solve for C. I'm getting further down, so I'm going to erase E because it's currently displayed now. Sine is zero, zero. Peace out. Whoa, why did you highlight that? What went down just now? And I can't even erase it without erasing that. All right, we're good. We're good. Let's try again. All right, there we go. And you'll notice that I have sine of C here and also one over here. Why don't I add that to this side? So I get 2 sine c equals sine pi over 2. And I could get that sine of c is equal to sine of pi over 2 divide 2. And at that point, then, you can either use a calculator, which I told you to, or you can simply evaluate it. So you get that sine of c equals one half, five of five two one. So sine of c is one half. So then you invert sine both sides, and you get that c is pi over six, which is choice B. C is pi over six. Okay, it's a good standard problem. Any questions on that one? Okay. Let's try another one. Ah, this one's pretty good. We ended 918. So here we go. You got two curves here. Y equals 5 and x, y equals x squared plus 1. I'm asking you to find the area of the shaded region. So keep in mind, the shaded region is not the area bounded by the curves. They're different. In this problem with Choke's the you can use a count. We are a short period today. I'm going to start passing the test back right now, just because we're going to run out of time.
ladies and gentlemen, in order to solve this problem, you have to first piece together what it is you're trying to solve. You're trying to solve for half of this area, right? So we're not going to integrate this thing from this intersection point to this intersection point. We're actually going to integrate this thing from zero to that intersection point. So the first thing you should probably do is find out, well, where do they actually intersect each other? And um, it's very easy to do mentally. The answer is 2 and negative 2, but just to show our work, x squared equals 4, and x equals plus and minus 2. So therefore, this is 2. We're trying to integrate this thing. Let us use a vertical rectangle. That's the clear choice here, clear choice. So if we were to use a vertical rectangle, a vertical rectangle, we're going to make sure that x is our variable. So let's draw one in here. Vertical rectangle. Nice. Top, 5. Bottom, x squared plus 1. Integration bounds, 0 to 2. So it becomes the integral from 0 to 2 of top 5 minus bottom x squared plus 1 in parentheses dx. An alternate approach to the problem. Solve it normally and divide your integral by 2 when you're done. You could do it from negative 2 to 2 and divide it by 2. There is symmetry here with parabola, so it would be the same thing. If you properly punch this in the calculator, you're going to get an answer of 16 thirds, which corresponds to choice B, but I hid the choices, so you did not know that. See if you can get 16 thirds real briefly for that piece. 